This episode of The Modern Rogue brought to you by NordVPN. Go to nordvpn.com forward slash rogue and get 70% off a three-year plan. Yeah, that's like $3.49 a month. Plus, you get a month free if you use promo code rogue at checkout. But you do have to spell it right. How much would you love to have a best-selling book? Oh, there's nothing more that okay. I want. But what if I told you it couldn't be in your name? Do I get to cash the check? What if I also told you it had to be about banging and sex? And also you didn't write it. <laughs> and also... The, <laughs> I'm failing to see the upside here, Brian. I've got to be honest with you. Uh, we've never talked about this, but I definitely helped to fake an erotic fiction book that became a bestseller that actually knocked one of the Fifty Shades of Grey books off of the top ten. No, oh, well, see, that's just the Lord's work. <laughs> But first, we need the backstory, right? Yeah, and I will say everybody should read the article that's posted at themodernrogue.com by Zanandi Boats, and it's filled with a bunch of literary hoaxes. There's been literary hoaxes forever and ever and ever, but the one that made me think of this story was of a DJ who had an overnight show on WORAM in the 1950s. Gene Shepard was their name, right? And so this is a very unpopular time. Nobody's really listening. It's the graveyard shift. So he starts to polarize his audience by saying, oh, we're fellow night people in those day walkers. They're they're all boring and slovenly and stupid and obeying all the rules. We're the punk rock crowd. Yeah, he's uh, building his cult and it was kind of countercultural. Uh, Lenny Bruce and uh, Jack Kerouac were fans and so he was really appealing uh, to that audience and that's kind of key to how you get uh, the groundswell of support to get something like this moving. Right? Exactly. So they're looking for some kind of prank, him and his listeners, just to mess with people and somebody suggests the idea of let's make up a book that doesn't exist Let's say it's salacious and filled with all kinds of erotic shenanigans, and let's have everybody go to bookstores and ask for it. So one of the listeners suggested a title, I Libertine. Sounds great, right? <laughs> also created a fake author, Frederick R. Ewing. Yeah, so there's this whole backstory, and everybody is now armed to go mess with bookstores. They go in, they ask for it. Bookstore owners at first are like, what the heck is this? And then they start acting like, oh yeah, no, 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 I know that book. Eh, it's currently out of stock. I'm gonna get my hands on it. At some point, demand gets big enough that a science fiction author is like, yeah, I'll just write it. Yeah. And you can buy that book to this day. They yeah. faked a book to mess with bookstore owners. Now it's a real book. Yeah, it went global. People all over the world were asking for it. And you can find it now. <laughs> Second story, the year's 1969. There's a bunch of pulp erotic nice. fiction going around. <laughs> and Newsday columnist Mike McGrady is pretty sure that any novel will sell if there's just enough sex in it. So he rounds up a bunch of fellow columnists who all gather together to write a book under the name Penelope Ash called Naked Came the Stranger. Nobody knew what the book was about. He basically had a framework at the beginning and at the end, and each person had to write a chapter. They only knew the main character's name, and she had to have sex with anything that moved. That's just like an improv exercise, basically. Apparently a very successful one, because they ended up revealing that the book was a hoax on national television as they introduced Penelope Ash, and out walks this string of columnists, and they reveal that everything was fake. Now, this was after it was already successful, or was it successful after the reveal? It became successful, and oh, you know what, I actually don't don't know what the sales were. It probably boosted. Probably people got more excited. Knowing it was a group thing. <laughs> <laughs> no? Which brings us to the story of the Diamond Club. Stop me if you've heard this before. There's a comedy show on a sleepy tech network with a very small, very dedicated audience. And at some point, the hosts, in this case, one Brian Brushwood, one Justin Robert Young, get the idea to fake an erotic fiction novel. Because here's what happened. When we released the second Scam School book, we had a fairly dedicated following. Everybody was gonna hit buy at the exact same moment, and usually on a digital chart, that's able to get you up there. Oh yeah, that's how and you do it. Unfortunately, this is right as the Fifty Shades of Grey phenomenon was beginning. And what I couldn't believe looking at the top 10 of Apple iBooks was, eh, there's Fifty Shades of Grey, that makes a lot of sense. But then there's like two or three covers of obvious knockoffs of Fifty Shades of Grey. And I remember my assistant at the time, John Tilton says, hey, next time you do a scam school book, maybe put a cover that looks like Fifty Shades of Grey. I'm like, ha yeah. And he was like, or maybe we just do a knockoff of Fifty Shades of Grey. And then there was this moment and I called Justin and it's like, what if we had the internet do a knockoff of Fifty Shades of Grey? So we came up with our own fake author, Patricia Harkins Bradley, which is a mashup of the names of both of our third grade teachers. <laughs> <laughs> and then we, we talked, we spent like four episodes talking to the audience, coming up with a framework. If you want to write a chapter for the erotic fiction book, all you have to do is go to bit.ly slash 
the Diamond Club book, and that's it. And then you just jump in, and the, the only thing is the chapter has to start with our main character, Brianna Young, entering the Diamond Club. It has to have her having a lot of sex with one of with any number of characters. We wanted everything to be overly trendy and of its time. So it takes place in Silicon Valley. It's about a jilted lover who uh, creates a Facebook and gets uh, Zuckerberg by her fiance and decides to have revenge on him by going to a sex club called The Diamond Club, which by the way, was the name of our hardcore fans. And <laughs> hardcore. <laughs> and in this case, have sex with anything that moves. Again, stop me if you've heard this before. Wait, now, did you already know about Naked Came the Stranger at no, this point? No, no. As a matter of fact, we had the idea, and it was Justin that did the research and found out about Naked Came the Stranger, and it was only reading the Modern Rogue article that I found out about Gene Shepard beforehand. So I didn't know that everything we did had already been done before. So what happened next? So we spent a few episodes sketching out all the names of the characters. We promised that we're going to write the first chapter and the last chapter. Everyone else is just going to write a chapter about an encounter that happens at the Diamond Club. And who boy, does the internet write some weird ass shit. Now, was there any uh, effort to make it uh, coherent, to make all the chapters tie together? I'm pretty sure this character's name spelled the same in all of it. <laughs> I wouldn't know, I still haven't read the thing. So it was really slapdash. Oh my God, incredibly so. As a matter of fact, uh, poor John Tilton, he had to go through and filter out all of those stuff that he's just like, I'm pretty sure this is necrophilia. <laughs> this one's bestiality. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. <laughs> wow. Everything else stayed in. Wait, wait, are you saying that the internet exposed the worst creative <laughs> impulses in people? <laughs> it gave them an opportunity to see whether or not they would make it into the Diamond Club. <laughs> oh God, you need to write an extended edition <laughs> nope, with nope, all nope, of the nope, perverse nope, stuff nope, in nope. it. <laughs> so at this point, it's a few weeks in and we have the book pretty much filtered together. We have somebody slap together a cover that looks very much like Fifty Shades of Grey, but we realize we have a very small but dedicated following. And if we're going to make it onto the charts, because the idea is if you get in that top 10, then all of a sudden anybody perusing is gonna see our book right next to all the others, but we need a little bit of a boost. So we turn to Reddit and we made a pitch video because this is a time when it is a cultural question mark. The whole world is saying, what is happening? This seems to be a really poorly written fan fiction of Twilight but with a bunch of banging, which by the way, spoiler alert, it's very poorly written erotic fan fiction <laughs> based on Twilight. Uh, have you ever read uh, Twilight? No. Okay, so uh, some people would say that it's poorly written. Right. And then you have Fifty Shades of Grey, which some people would also say is poorly written, very successful, but it's ostensibly something poorly written based on something poorly written. And then you took something and said, let's have something poorly written based on, it's a copy of a copy of a copy with horrible diminishing return. Yes, so we make a pitch video because we explained to Reddit, it's like, look, it has to be on the paid charts. We're gonna charge the minimum amount that we can, 99 cents. But if you are as befuddled by the Fifty Shades phenomenon as we are, and our goal was not to, to punk anyone, our goal was to have confused housewives all across the country think that, that well, uh, that's okay, I guess. So we made our pitch video hit the front page of Reddit, and then when it launched, here's the part I didn't expect. People not only kicked in 99 cents for the prank, but they also started posting these five-star reviews. So your pitch video explained that this is a hoax. Oh yeah, yeah, well, well, and it depends, man, because at the end of the day, if what you want is, is banging. I accepted his friend request between my alabaster thighs. Her pinstriped apron was tied very high, so it helped push her tits almost out of her top. I've always wanted to learn to ride, and you look like you need a mare to tame. It definitely delivers. <laughs> it's definitely a book with a lot of sex in it. Yeah, you don't usually watch porn for the stories, right? <laughs> right, exactly. So what I didn't expect is everybody going all in, writing five-star reviews, saying, ooh, hot, steamy action in the vein of E.L. James. If you've dug Fifty Shades of Grey, you're gonna love this. They go absolutely crazy for it. This thing hits number three on the iBooks charts. It actually displaces 
the, one of the Fifty Shades of Grey books, and I'll be damned if you look at that, it doesn't look like just another one of those. But here's the part I did not expect. Are you familiar with the concept of social proof? Uh, I can't say that I am. Okay, so uh, Robert Cialdini wrote about it in his book, Influence. It's the reason we have laugh tracks, it's the reason we trust Yelp reviews. It's the idea that when everybody else agrees that something's pretty good, we tend to go along with it. Bandwagoning. Yeah, well exactly, and, and it's safer that way. You can understand, you know, from an evolutionary standpoint why we would do that. When we launched the book, if you looked at the customers also bought section, it was very clearly our crowd because it's all of my books, my friend Andrew Maine's books. It's very clearly a prank. I come back two weeks later. This thing is still in the top 10. Only when I scroll down, customers also bought all erotic fiction books. So clearly it's actually landing with the intended audience. The fake Twitter account that we have for Patricia Harkins Bradley starts getting tweets asking when the new novel's gonna come out because they're ready for more hot steamy action. This thing was a bold of And here's the best part. There were lots of five-star reviews, which of course are our people. There's a bunch of one-star reviews, people who feel like they got tricked or punked. But my favorite is we started to see a bunch of three-star reviews that pretty much said, uh, you know, doesn't make a lot of sense, but it definitely delivers on the sex. So what was the tipping point? Did the bottom ever fall out or did it just kind of fade it, away? It eventually faded away, but it took an astonishingly long time. There is something about the mere fact of appearing or actually being successful that causes you to go on being successful. And what's funny is now that when I look at those sales numbers, I'm just like, those are the kind of numbers that if we had actually published it and hit those numbers, it would have been a New York Times legitimate bestseller. As I understand it, what you were doing was you got your foothold into feeding the genre. And lots of genres do this. You find them in sci-fi and fantasy and erotica most uh, prominently, where no, they're not the best books, but they are regular and easily digestible. It's fast food and an author will put three, four, six, ten of them out in a year. So if you wanted to, I really think you could have continued that success. You got the foothold, you just decided not to maintain it because you're a horrible liar. Yeah, but then I'd have to keep on publishing those books. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say this, if I was going to attribute one thing, I think it's the fact that a lot of people think about what they have to say in the world when they make their YouTube pages or whatever. Very few people think about what the world wants to hear. In this case, we managed to create something that existed as two things and was two answers to two different groups of people. There are people who are hungry for books with a lot of banging in it, but there are also people hungry to punk those people. And so we were the only product that came in and was both, and I think that's what fed the incredible success. And also, to this day, Justin will go to the mat with anyone who wants to say that Diamond Club is a worse book than Fifty Shades of Grey, because you cannot tell the difference of those reviews. Those reviews are identical. This is a garbage book. <laughs> with a lot of banging, or this is a garbage book with a lot of banging. Well, I haven't read Twilight, I haven't read Fifty Shades of Grey, haven't read Diamond Club. Well, you know, we can fix that. We need an audiobook, and I do have the original document right here. <laughs> just, just let me, g give me a moment, just let me, let me hear. What, what's this chapter called? Soviet sex toy. <laughs> it was Australian themed night at the Diamond Club, and I had been shopping around for days for the perfect outfit. I was originally going to dress as a female <laughs> crocodile dundee. <laughs> but when the buff man behind the counter told me he had a sexy kangaroo outfit out back, I had insisted on going out back with him to try it on. <laughs> After a bit of flirting and teasing, I managed to convince him to show me whatever he had <laughs> down under. Take me, I said in my most seductive voice. With little hesitation, he pulled my tuck shirt from out of my miniskirt, placing one hand on my bare breast, and I'm stopping right there. That's, 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 that's uh, I'm done. Oh my God. Dude, uh, huge thanks to uh, my partner in crime, Justin Robert Young. Thank you for letting me share this story right here, and thank you to the Diamond Club who wrote this wonderful monstrosity. Man, what a ride that was. Oh, Monorug is a scoundrel. <laughs> Jason Murphy, tell me one amazing thing that happened to you today. Uh, I had a friend actually reach out to me and go, hey, so is Nord actually easy? Like, easy, easy? That was their biggest concern. They were concerned about its military-grade encryption, whether or not he was going to be able to tunnel to other places. He wanted to know how easy it was. Yeah, and I'm sitting there texting him going, you really don't understand how simple it is to get that kind of privacy and protection. And while I'm explaining it to him, while I'm trying to think of the simplest words to convey this message, he says, oh, so I just click on the country and I'm done. 
So <laughs> while I was trying to explain to him, he got it set up and got it working. Previously, let's say you wanted to watch uh, some certain programming, you might have hopped on a plane and gone over to England so that you wouldn't be region locked out of it. Nowadays, you can virtually be there. I used to fly to other countries so that I could watch their uh, region locked programming. <laughs> I don't have to do that anymore, and neither do you. Thanks to our friends over at NordVPN. Look, not only are they best of breed, not only do they have a top score from PCMag.com, you can get 70% off. That's $3.49 per month and a month free if you go to nordvpn.com slash rogue use promo code rogue at checkout the hardest part is spelling the word rogue right don't don't spell it rouge 70 percent off all you got to do is spell one five letter word correctly we've practiced this we've told you it's in your hands you've got, you got this. this you've got this what if we had the internet write a book we have not read the book and it was all just completely crowdsourced and had little cohesion amongst the chapters and just delivered on... Bang it!